In this lecture, we're finally going to get around to using ECS. So we're going to convert what we've got so far, which is our parallel computing for loop or our move job that we created and make the whole thing an ECS system. The first thing that we're going to need to do, which will be different from our spawn manager, is to create a ECS spawn manager. So what I'm going to do is, again, save this project uh, file, save as, not the project, the scene, and let's call that the ECS sheep. Now, with that, what I'm going to do on my spawn manager, I'll keep it called spawn manager, but just turn off the spawn parallel script, or you can remove it if you like. I'm going to create a new script. So create C sharp script, and this one is going to be called the ECS manager. Now, the ECS manager will be a mono behavior. So we can go ahead and attach that to our spawn manager and just have a look that it's there. Now, before we can edit that, we need to bring in the packages that are required to work with the ECS. So go in and Unity up to Window, Package Manager. Now, there's a whole bunch of different packages that you need. So have a look for something called the Hybrid Renderer. So I'm just going to type Hybrid in there, and then we're going to go and look under Advanced show preview packages and you'll find your hybrid renderer. Please note the version that I'm using with the version of Unity that I'm using so that you can pick up the same one. So this is 0.3.3. Now installing that will install all of the other packages that you need as well. So click on install and you're going to end up with the entities, the mathematics, uh, the transforms, and a whole bunch of others. This is just easier than doing it one by one. So the hybrid renderer is basically responsible to making sure that your entities that you create from your prefabs are visible on the screen. So it actually draws them and it's kind of like the end point of all of these different packages that you need. So once that has finished installing, at this point, I just want to add a really quick note, and that is to be sure that you've imported these packages, the hybrid renderer and all of the other ones that it brings in with us. Whenever you bring in a Unity package that I've supplied with this course, if you don't, you open up a new Unity project and you bring in one of my ECS packages, then you will get errors appearing in there. Now, these errors should go away if you go into the package managers and add in from there your hybrid renderer. But that's just something to take note of when you do end up with errors involving the world or entities or anything ECS related when you bring in one of my pre-prepared packages that is attached to any of the lectures. We can close our window and go back into our ECS manager script. At the top, we're now going to include all of these new using library files. So it will be unity.entities using unity dot mathematics and using unity dot transforms. Now, if your Visual Studio gives you these squiggly red lines of death because it can't find things, the reason being is that Visual Studio was open when I added the packages. So if I just quickly shut all of this down and reopen it up, you'll see now that we're all good. So all of these errors have gone away. Okay, the first thing we need at the top of our ECS manager is what's called an entity manager. So let's add entity manager and we'll call that manager. So this is kind of like the container that holds on to everything. And I might actually like to spell that properly, manager, like that. Now we also need to bring in our public game object, which is our sheep prefab. So let's add that sheep prefab and const int num sheep again, which is still set to our 15,000. Don't increase that just yet. 
Okay, uh, now everything in here is basically going to happen inside of our start. And this is just a spawner. That's all it's going to be doing is just creating a whole bunch of sheep and turning them into entities. So let's initialize our manager. So the manager was going to equal the world dot default game object inject world dot entity manager. That's going to grab the default entity manager that's existing in the ECS system because you can have multiple entity managers if you so wish. OK, we're then also going to get some settings. So settings is going to equal our game object conversion settings, which is somewhere down here. Let's see conversion settings dot from world world dot default game object inject world and then we want null on the end of there okay and then var prefab we create our prefab equals game object conversion utility dot convert game object hierarchy sheep prefab using the settings okay so basically this is grabbing the settings that are set up in the default entity manager which we will go into later on creating a prefab from our game object which exists in our hierarchy and basically we're going to inject that into the world okay so what we need to do inside of here is have a for loop again which creates all of our instances so i equals zero inside of a for loop and then i is less than num sheep i plus plus and then inside of here we actually start to create all the instances so the first instance var instance is going to equal manager dot instantiate our prefab. So this is kind of like our game object dot instantiate that we instantiate game objects from to exist in the hierarchy. We're actually instantiating from our entity and putting it into the entity manager. So it's a very similar process. Then we want to set the position for our sheep. So the position is going to equal in this case transform dot transform point which is a position it's going to be a new float 3 unity engine dot random dot range minus 50 50 then 0 and then the same thing again is unity engine dot random dot range minus 50 and 50. So this is creating a point in 3D space that is the same as the point we created for the vector 3 that we actually put the sheep at before. Let me make this screen a little bit bigger so you can see all of the code when I return. Okay, so we're not doing anything different than we did before except that the code looks very different notice we're using this float 3 instead of using a vector 3 again the float 3 is a, a structure that is very different to an actual class which is your vector 3 and therefore is usable inside of the ECS system Again, if you just hold on for a little bit longer, we will get to the point of looking at all of these differences between structures and classes and then vector threes and float threes and those sorts of things and why you have to use these. Right, next we're going to add to our instance our component. So it's manager.setComponentData. Remember, each entity has an entity and then it points to a whole bunch of different components that are attached to it. So here we're actually manually adding our components to this sheep instance. 
So we're going to say instance in here and the first thing we want to add to it is a new translation. Now in ECS speak, the translation is basically the structure holding on to the value of the position. So you might be used to using position when it comes to working with transforms in ECS for your transform, it's translation. So translation position are basically exactly the same things. They're just called different in here. And in fact, when the first sort of stages of ECS came out, uh, this was actually called position with a capital P, but it has since changed. So now we're going to go to um, add another component. So set component data. And now if you remember when we calculated the movement in the job system of our sheet, we had to include the rotation. So we also need to include the rotation in this example as well. So value is going to equal new quaternion and I'm going to set it to 0000, which basically will keep our default rotation that the sheep already has. Now, what's really important with you debugging this code and getting it absolutely right is to remember about all of the structures and where these squiggly brackets are. Okay, so when you create a new instance of a structure, you then have your squiggly brackets with the values set inside like that. Right, that's your manager code. So save it, switch back into Unity. Now go over to the spawn manager where you actually added this code onto and you'll see your ECS manager. Now if we grab our sheep, here and we drag and drop it into that prefab, we can press play. We now will get our 15,000 sheep created as entities. Now, notice something very different from the last time we created our 15,000 sheep. They all appeared in the hierarchy, but now because they're entities, they're not in the hierarchy. Now they're not moving because we haven't written that part of the script yet. Uh, I just wanted to show you the creation of the actual sheep entities uh, in the game environment and the difference. Now, if we have a look at our stats on this and have a look at our frames, it's quite high, okay? Because they're entities and the way they're rendered is different, you're gonna get a higher frame rate uh, and we could add even more. So we're up in the hundreds here. We're not moving anything yet. But when we first added these sheeps way back with the classic and we had 15,000 of them, we were looking at like 22 frames per second, I think I remember. And so we've already increased this like, you know, by fivefold, which is fantastic. All right, so that's creating the ECS manager and actually spawning or instantiating entities from prefabs.